all you moms out there. I'm Melissa Taylor here with you again this week for our final audio teaching for the Mom Set Free online Bible study. Um, you guys, we're in week seven. Um, thank you for hanging in there and, um, and doing this study with us. We have um, a great week this week in that you're going to kind of have some time to reflect on what we've done so far in the online Bible study. If you have fallen behind at all, Hey, guess what? This is your week. You get to catch up. If there's any of the teachings that you've missed, you can listen to those um, or go back and review some of the stuff that we've read during the week. But um, Jeannie is back with us again. Um, Jeannie Cunyon, you have been such a blessing to oh, all you. of us moms. Thank you so thank much. You. This has been a this has been a great encouragement to me as well. I never, ever, ever stop meeting these truths. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And thank you just for being our friend and um and sharing the realness of being a mom in today's world because it's not easy and yeah. um and there is a lot of pressure but um like you said if you guys if you have the book mom set free and you turn to week seven this is the first thing you see breathe in grace dear mom mm -hmm. and um i think that's one of the things we've learned the most is we got to breathe in that grace you said it one week that you just guzzle grace because you need it you're always thirsty for it yes and um so okay let's get to this week's message i'm really um excited to hear it is about the freedom to be broken together and so yeah. you guys let's hear what Jeannie has to say this week yeah, this is one of those things that really, I can say if people said, you know, what was one of some of the biggest takeaways for you in writing Mom Set Free or what God did in your own life through writing Mom Set Free, it would be this broken together uh, mindset. So I'm so excited to talk about this today. Um, I'm thinking about a song written years ago by Casting Crowns. It's called Broken Together. And honestly, I can only imagine the number of marriages that have been healed and restored by God just through the lyrics, because they sing about how we can do life in the broken together posture. This song encourages us to hold on to hope as we remember one another's humanity, as we walk along one another in humility, and as we fight for healing. What I love about this song is that it isn't just for marriage, though. It's about, it's for all of life. It's for our friendships. It's for our workplaces. And yes, it's even for our parenting, which I think is hard to wrap our minds around for a lot of us. This idea that we have to walk alongside our children in brokenness to be broken together. I know it's a it's a real challenge for a lot of us. And I and I totally get it because for so many years, I desperately tried to hide my brokenness from my kids. I didn't want them to be privy to my sin. So whether you're a mom of a two-year-old or a 32-year-old, I'm going to guess that you also don't love the idea of your children being privy to your humanity. Right? We, we might be um, prone to ask the question, well, how will they respect me or look up to me or obey me if I let them know I struggle, if I let them see and, and I confess my my brokenness. And, and yet the unchangeable reality is that we, meaning us and our children, are all sinners saved by grace. We are all broken. We are all God's beloved, and we all need Jesus. And of course, this isn't to this broken together posture. This isn't to suggest that we want to submit to or celebrate sin. That's really important. This isn't about submitting to sin or celebrating our sin. God calls us to fight for victory over our sin with his resurrection power that has been given to us as new creations in Jesus Christ. So parenting with a broken together mindset doesn't mean we give up our fight against sin and the devastating effects it has on our lives. And it doesn't mean we stop modeling a heart in pursuit of holiness. It's actually the opposite. It means we create a culture of confession, not perfection in our homes. We create a culture of confession, not perfection in our homes. That's what it looks like to be broken together. Because if we want to raise kids who tell the truth willingly and repent sincerely, if that's what we want for our kids, that they, they desire to be truth tellers, that they desire to repent when they mess up, then we have to go first. When we're honest about our brokenness, we free our children to be honest about theirs. And then this is the beautiful thing that happens. Grace is unleashed 
to do its transforming work in their hearts. How do we, so how do we create a culture of confession, not perfection? What does that look like? We let our children see our willingness to confess our sinfulness because, because here's the good news. Oh, we have a savior who willingly laid down his life to cover us. What Paul writes in Colossians 3, 12 through 17 is so full of wisdom on how to parent in the broken together posture. And so I want us to read it together. He writes, put on men as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds together everything in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It's verse 16 in this passage where Paul exhorts us to let the message about Christ and all its richness fill our lives. That really speaks to me about this broken together posture, because in other words, he's he's saying, let us immerse ourselves in the good news and the grace of God. Let it dwell in us richly. And then the broken together overflow is the result. This approach with our kids. So, so when we unpack this, right, when we think about, well, what does this sound like in my daily parenting? Like, what does it look like? What are the things that I'm saying to my kids if I'm parenting in a and a posture of confession, not perfection. And, and maybe it sounds a little something like this. This is what it sounds like for me with my boys. You know, I'll say, I know why you struggle. I know why you might've said that thing or did that thing. I know because, because I struggle too. I get it. I get it because I need Jesus too. So let's ask him to forgive us and help us with these struggles. See, this having a broken mindset, it empowers us. This is the difference. It empowers us to come alongside our kids rather than down on our mm, kids. That's Can good, you just Jamie. envision that? Like you're coming alongside them, like your arms around them, like you're not affirming the sin. You're not celebrating the sin. You're just, you're coming alongside them and saying, I get it. I struggle too, rather than coming down on them with shame, going like, well, who could, who does right. that? Or who says that? It's a radical difference. And so when we come alongside our kids, we come alongside them at the foot of the cross, right? It's level ground at the foot of the cross. We all need Jesus. And then it's there that we point them to the forgiving, rescuing, transforming power of Christ. And it's this mindset that empowers us to correct them rather than condemn them. Right. So rather than responding to our child's sin with shock, right? I used to do that. I mean, I I literally responded to my like three-year-old sin was shock. (laughs) But why would I do that? Like, of course he's going to mess up because I'm not parenting Jesus, right? Like, (laughs) like unless you're parenting Jesus, they are going to sin every day, right? But, and yet I would still respond to their sin, like with shock. But instead of doing that, we get to respond with God's shocking love. In whichever approach we choose, shock or shocking love, will have a significant impact on our relationship with our children and on their spirits. So in closing today, I just want to remind us, honestly, this is, this is such the kindness of God to teach this to me because, because of how I used to respond with shock. This is the truth. The most sacred space to demonstrate God's love is in our child's failure. God demonstrated his love to us at our worst. So to reflect his heart, we get to do the same with our children. We get to be broken together and we get to go to the cross together and we get to receive his love and be reminded of our identity as beloved, chosen, adopted children of God. That is so good. Oh my goodness. I think there um, 
oh, so many things that um, that you said. I loved when you put it practically and just saying, hey, I know because I struggle too and I get it. And to be able to correct rather than condemn, you said, you know, yeah. rather than coming down on them. And um, there was a time not too long ago that my daughter got into a little bit of trouble. And I did, I was like, what were you thinking when you talked about responding with shock? I thought that's really hard not to respond with shock. Mm -hmm. But even then you have the opportunity to also say, admit your struggle with that and apologize. And, right. you know, it shows your realness. And then um, I will say it's some of the times when we have been broken together that I've seen the biggest growth in me as a mom and in my kids. And That's it right. has also helped us to see that we may not always agree and we might continue to mess up, but we love each other no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with you. And I'm not against you. I'm here with you. Yeah. Even when you do mess up, and I always will be, because my goodness, that's the one thing that Jesus shows us all through scripture, and he has definitely shown it in, in my life, and I'm sure y'all's too, is that um, other people might walk away from you, but I will never walk away from you. And mm -hmm. when we can show that with our parents to be broken together, I think, like you said, wow, the most sacred space to demonstrate God's love is in their failure, and God was has always been there for us and is there for us with it, with our worst. So, um, Jeannie, thank you so much in helping us to see how we can reflect God's heart and we can do that with our children. Yeah. What a privilege to do that, right? Oh, what a privilege to do yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, just thank you so much. These last um, seven weeks have been at such a time of just – reflection for me as a mom of mostly older kids, I look back and I have a lot of regrets. Yeah. And this week has just really helped me to, um, to see that God is the one who's working through it. And um, I don't have to live in things that I did wrong or mistakes that I might make or the pressure that I might feel as a mom to try and make everything perfect in my kids' life, but in trusting the Lord, and I think that's the message we heard over and over again, God is here for us. Moms, he's here for you. He's the one that, I mean, he made you a mom, and um, he's not going to abandon you in the parenting that you do throughout your entire life yeah. with your children. Yeah. So, Jeannie, any parting words for us this week as we wrap up the study? I mean, I think, that, I think you just said it. It's you know, we are free to, uh, we are free from trying to play his role in their lives, mm. right? We are free. We were never called to be their savior. We were called to be their parents. So we're free from that pressure. And instead we get to, we don't have to, we get to trust God with the children he's entrusted to us. And as we learn to trust him, we will walk in freedom. We will we will parent open-handed and we will get to see him work through our weakness, not to our glory, right? Because we sometimes, you know, it's not about the, us getting glory. It's about, it's all about his glory. right? And we'll get to see him be glorified through our parenting uh, as we walk as mom set free. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeannie. And My everybody, pleasure. thank you guys for being with us. Um, we just pray for you as you continue in your journey as a mom and as you finish this online Bible study, and that even after this study, you will continue to, um, to stay in God's Word and learning more and more about how much He loves you and how much He's there for you in all aspects of your life. Because when you know the truth and live the truth, it will change everything. Mm -hmm.